Hello, and welcome to TOPS, the Backo Online Policy Seminar. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Sam Sturm, a fourth year economics PhD student at Georgia State University. TOPS is organized by Mike Pesco at the University of Missouri, C. Shang at The Ohio State University, Michael Darden at Johns Hopkins University, and Jamie Hartman Boyce at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. The seminar today will be one hour with questions from the moderator and discussant. The audience may pose questions and comments in the Q&A panel, and the moderator will draw from these questions and comments in conversation with the presenter. Please review the guidelines on tobaccopolicy.org for acceptable questions. Please keep the questions professional and related to the research being discussed. Questions that meet the seminar series guidelines will be shared with the presenter afterwards, even if they are not read aloud. Your questions are very much appreciated. The presentation is being video recorded and will be made available along with presentation slides on the TOPS website at tobaccopolicy.org. I will now turn the presentation over to today's moderator, Michael Darden from Johns Hopkins University to introduce our speaker. Thanks, Sam. That was great. So um, today we're going to continue with our winter and spring 2024 season with a single paper presentation by Yi Chen Fang entitled, Is China's Comprehensive Smoke-Free Policy Effective? A Synthetic Difference in Differences Analysis in Beijing. Uh, this presentation was selected via a competitive review process by submission through the TOPS website. Uh, Yi Chen Fang is a first year MS epidemiology student at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, concentrating on cardiovascular epidemiology. His research focuses on evaluating the comparative effectiveness and safety of cardiovascular drugs via target trial emulation with administrative databases. And meanwhile, his public policy background led to his interest in the tobacco related topics, such as smoking cessation interventions and the evaluation of tobacco control policies. Our discussant today is Kai Wen Cheng, an assistant professor in health administration and informatics department from Governor State University. Yi Chen Fang, thank you for pre uh, present, uh, presenting for us today. Okay, um, thank you, Sam, and thank you, Michael, for introducing. Um, I will share my slides now. Okay. So, um, thank you for inviting me to give this presentation on my paper named Is China's Comprehensive Smoothie Policy Effective? A Synthetic Difference in Differences Analysis in Beijing. Um, my co-author, uh, Dr. Jason Douglas Dalton, will be joining, joining us today because of the time differences between uh, US and Beijing, uh, in China and China but he will be uh, happy to take questions via email uh, listed here. And please um, send us any, any like feedbacks or comments ap uh, during or afterward the presentation. So let's jump into the contents of today's presentation. So before the main contents of this presentation, I have to make some disclosures. So first, this work is not supported by any funding. And the second is that the authors have received no tobacco related funding over the past 10 years. And third is that the present study has not yet been published and it is currently undergoing revision. So please feel free to raise any questions or comments uh, during the presentation um, and our possible questions during the presentation and we will uh, appreciate any feedbacks in any form uh, that we can make our str uh, study stronger. Okay. So what is the motivation behind this study? So as I guess uh, all, most of the audience uh, who joined, decided to join us uh, with this seminar today noticed how big a public health issue is with tobacco use throughout uh, across the world. And in fact, uh, many interventions or policies has been implemented to reduce tobacco consumption. Um, so in to particular, comprehensive smoke fee policies have been recognized as one of the most effective tools to reduce smoking behaviors uh, as suggested by many, many studies across the world. But however, what is the gap in knowledge is that there is no rigorous smoking policy evaluation has been conduct conducted in China. The country um, actually with one of the highest smoking prevalence uh, throughout the world. So, so these, uh, this rest rationale motivated um, this study. So some, this is a definition of what is a comprehensive smoothie policy that will be uh, used throughout uh, this, this presentation, this research. 
So the, the definition is actually the policies enacted to achieve a complete smoking ban in public, indoor public places, workplaces, and public transport with no buffer period and smoking rooms and clear law enforcement bodies and penalties. So it's really important to highlight the second half of the um, definition because a lot of you know policies have been enacted that should basically say, okay, you cannot smoke in indoor areas, but we will have places for you to smoke. So like the smoking rooms, et cetera. But with this comprehensive smoking policy, it is a total ban on this uh, on smoking behavior in indoor places. There's no place, not like no smoking rooms, et cetera. So this is really important. So what is the current status of smoky, uh, comprehensive smoke-free legislation in China? So I believe this graphic um, can give us a quite uh, intuitive sense on how low the you know prevalence of the policy implementation throughout China. So you can tell, I can see from the yellow um, parts here are the one other cities that have actually uh, enacted this policy as of today. And then as since that this policy is not enacted on the province level, instead it's like enacted on the city and prefecture level city or municipality level, you can see that like the this green graph here like represents the problem the, like the the greener it is, the higher the proportion of the population in this province that has been covered or, or resides under the city that enacted this comprehensive small fee policy. So with that said, um, the general figure is that there's only 15.3% of the whole population in China has been covered by this policy. And it is really low, um, especially considering there's actually no um, national level comprehensive small fee policy. And actually back in the history, like a couple of years ago, there's have been suggestions uh, for the inaction of this study. Uh, in action of this policy, but uh, it didn't go anywhere further. And uh, especially compared to say, um, this is really low, it's really compared to other developing countries like Brazil and um, so this BRICS countries. And then um, China is the one that has actually not uh, enacted the policy national nationwide, which is a really big problem. Um, so the objective is, uh, outline this slide. So why we chose Beijing as our uh, example or the study uh, intervention uh, the treaty unit here? Is it because that Beijing has its amount of first places to witness a CSFP implementation in 2015? So actually it's right in the middle of the longitudinal panel data that we will be, uh, that I'll be covering in the next uh, couple of slides between the, uh, 2010 and 2020. So what that means is that it will grant us enough pre-treatment and post-treatment period so that we can finally get a glimpse of the true policy effect on the early adopters. Um, so this study essentially is trying to evaluate this CSFP on smoking, one, smoking rate, and second, cigarette consumption, which is defined as the number of cigarettes smoked by per person per day. So methodologies, um, as it is evident in my uh, the title of this paper, uh, the methodology I use is called synthetic difference in differences design. So trying to understand what is uh, synthetic SDID design and why I used it, uh, I think it's uh, helpful to do some re uh, refresh on the difference in differences methods and synthetic control methods. Um, so it is quite, from this uh, figure, I believe this is, is very uh, intuitive to see. So this red line here represents the treated unit, the observed outcome trend of the treated unit. And then the green line here represents the observed outcome trend, outcome of interest trend uh, in the untreated unit. So if we just so we start uh, we start only look only at the left side left hand side of this um, figure. So prior to the study 
uh, priority to treatment, we can see there is a constant uh, difference in outcomes between the treated and the untreated unit. And then we can observe this parallel trend exist like throughout the time periods prior to the treatment. So if this parallel trend assumption holds, which is not, you know, not really like statistically testable, but with the visual inspection, if that holds, we can assume that the green line, this, this one, this untreated unit that shares the same pre-treatment outcome trend works as a counterfactual of the treated unit. What that means is that the green line, see, especially at, uh, you can see after the treatment, the, this, dot, uh, this dot here will represent the counterfactual scenario that what would happen if the red, the treated unit has not been treated. Okay, so this excessive amount of the change in the outcome can be viewed as the causal effect, impact, causal effect um, by the treatment assigned here. Okay, so someone may ask, well, we have to find this parallel trend, right? And then it is, it sounds not easy to find, and actually it is. Um, there's, so that's lead, that led us to our next methodology going to be discussed, which is the synthetic control methodology. So the name is very intuitive as well. In synthetic control, we basically generate in synthetic control through a set of algorithms um, by weighing the donor units. So I will take this um, classic paper that evaluated the Proposition 99 policy enacted in California as an example. This is a very classic paper. And then this solid black line here represents the observed outcome trend, which is in this case is the per capita secret cells in California, this solid black line. And this vertical line is means that is represents the treatment, which is the policy in action date. And what we've done is that, or what they've done is that they used, um, they collected da data on this outcome for other states in the United States. And then they are assigned as the donors. And what they do is they put these donors, these states into the algorithm. And then through this observation process, they assign weights that like the weights are all positive and sum us to one. And then assign weights to each of the donor units. And then construct this uh, synthetic control which is synthetic California here, that shares the same, see, basically, you know, approximately the same outcome trend pre-treatment. So if that holds, we can say that this dashed black line represents the counterfactual scenario of the California, of California from 1970 to 2000. So this point here actually represents the counterfactual outcome of California. What that means is that what 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 would have happened if California has not been treated with Proposition ninety nine policy back in this year. So you see this gap in the outcome can be interpreted as the causal effect of this Proposition ninety nine policy on the per capita secret cells. So that's the um, really the intuition behind these two scenarios, our two methodologies. And so this is a, a brief comparison to see how it is actually quite similar. Um, the, you know, the working mechanism is quite similar between the DID estimator and the synthetic control estimator. So in a lot of times we, you know, we um, write the DID estimator as a linear regression in the form, but instead we can recast it into a two-way two -way fixed effect uh, formulation here, where we have the unit average and time average here at the alpha i and the beta t here. 
the alpha i represents you know the intercept of the outcome between the you know the units and also the time uh, the beta t will represents the uh, control for the time trends of the outcome and synthetic control estimator if we recast into this form as well the optim optimization problem we can see we do no longer have this unit uh, averages here in the model instead we, we we introduce a weight here this is the weight that I just mentioned that being assigned to each donor so that the outcome, pre-outcome trend of the synthetic control can be the same as to the um, treated unit. Okay, so what is synthetic differences, the difference in differences? It's really just a combination of the two methodologies, you know, and basically harness is the best of the two methodology I've just discussed and off offer us more flexibility um, in terms of the assumptions that need to be made when using each estimator. So these are the two formulas I've just discussed, briefly discussed in the previous slides. And then this is compared to this DID formula we have here. You see, we reintroduce this fixed effect, unit fixed effect to the synthetic differences uh, synthetic, uh, synthetic control uh, model, I just uh, typo here, synthetic control model, and then you see here, and we still have this um, weighted uh, unit weights, and we re and we introduce a time weights uh, to the equation. So basically that's the uh, intuition behind it. So what that means is that if we uh, briefly reminds of uh, the DID, the graph of the difference in differences and the synthetic control, what we do is instead of forcing the synthetic control shares exact outcome pre -out, uh, pre treatment outcome trend to the treated unit, we allow there to be gap between the pre, -pre treatment trend of the outcome of uh, the treated and the synthetic control. So it's like difference in differences, but we we forced um, it to be may meet a parallel assumption via the SDID estimator. So back to the our study. So again, this study uses SDID as uh, design, and then we try to estimate short term and long term policy impact on the cigarette consumption and smoking rates. For the short term effect, we use donors that did not enact. ACSFP between 2010 and 2016, because uh, we do not want any spillover effect or you know con contamination of our uh, data in terms of outcome or in terms of the treatment, and this estimator estimates what the policy effect is one year after policy adoption, and then the long term effect is quite similar, but we use a different set of uh, adop adopters. It's actually the one the subset of the uh, donors we used in the short term estimation. And estimates five what the policy effect is five years into the policy implementation. And besides the uh, primary analysis, we adopt two sensitivity analyses in our study. So the first one is a uh, fixed effect regression. So what we did what we did is that we identified the correlation between the proportion of the population being covered by the CSFP within a province and the outcome of interest. So in that case, we not, no longer only look at the policy effect on baiting, but also looking at the policy effect on the later adopters, we implemented the policy you know, between this, our study period. But it's worth noticing that this offers no, no causal interpretation, but the, if the results um, aligns with the one that we discovered in the primary analysis, it can back up you know, our study validity. And then the second sensitive analysis is that we used a uh, leave one out analysis, which is an iterative process where a weighted donor was removed from the donor pool once at a time. And a new synthetic control was generated via the same procedure and the treatment effect was estimated again. So we do this many, many, many times to make sure that there is no uh, donor that effect 
this uh, model too much, me making this um, estimation not uh, stable. Okay, so after the methodology, I'm going to discuss about what is the data we're going to use. So finding the appropriate data source is actually quite um, difficult in China, especially related to tobacco uh, use. Um, so what I've done instead is looking at some publicly available data that has um, smoking related information in it. And this one called China Family Panel Studies con uh, conducted by Peking University in Beijing is a longitudinal uh, by, by now survey panel data from 2010 to 2020. So we have uh, six data points in total, like each uh, between two years. And then the outcome is the smoking rate and smoking amount, which is defined by the question uh, in the questions, uh, answers to the question in the questionnaire, like have you smoked in the past one month? And how, if you smoke, how much do you smoke per, per, you know, per day? And then the treated unit uh, is a survey district in Beijing. And then it would be you know, ideal to have the Beijing data, but due to the nature of this um, database we have, we do not have the whole uh, the data for the whole but representative data for the Beijing municipality. We only have one um, samples being a couple uh, 100 or 200 samples being taken in one district in Beijing. And which district it is, we would like to know, but uh, it was indexed because of the privacy protection policy of the CFPS. So for donor units, we also chose the units, uh, donor units on the same administrative level in China, which is district or county levels of other um, municipalities or uh, prefecture city cities. So we chose the ones that have more than 100 participants um, sur surveyed on each um, unit. And then in this study, study, we actually included 72 donors for short-term and 63 donors for long-term estimation. So this is uh, for those who are not familiar with the political structure in China. I believe uh, this figure can be of um, help can be helpful because, as I just mentioned in the first couple slides, is that this comprehensive smoking policy was implemented on the prefecture city level or municipality level. So why we use uh, data from districts and then counties is because we do not know which, like, because the data from the CFPS, we only have the name of the province of which what the like, part, uh, survey participants resides in. We do not know which exact city this participant resides in. An example was collected from the county or district level. And what we've done is that we basically, if there's one prefecture city implemented this policy before the um, between 2010 uh, to 2016, the short term, we exclude every single person in this province because we do not know which city this participant resides in because of the indexed uh, num num system of uh, this database. So making our study uh, more difficult. So that's the way uh, how we um, trying to avoid um, this limitation. So therefore, that's why we chose um, the donors on the district level, which is the bottom level here. So before um, the results, I'm going to pause for the discussions for some brief discussion. Yes. Thanks so much, Yichen. So um, we have uh, uh, Kai Wen Cheng from uh, Governor State University who will offer some comments. Yeah, um, it's a very, very interesting paper um, looking at a very important topic. Um, it looks at China. Um, China is a very unique setting 
um, in the tobacco control field, um, the smoking rate is very high in China, and China is the largest uh, tobacco producer in the world. Um, and among Chinese um, smokers in China, there is a unique um, social norm um, where smokers are exchanging, <laughs> sharing cigarettes as a way of social interaction. Um, and um, cigarette packs, cigarette uh, boxes, cartons are commonly used as a gift uh, during holidays. So with that said, um, it's very important uh, to look at this, um, um, this setting uh, in China and uh, figure out what are what could be the possible um, effective policies to curb the cigarette smoking. Um, I have um, questions. Um, well, I have a few questions. Um, I wonder if you can um, perhaps um, comment about the um, the compliance, the enforcement of the of the small free policies. Um, I, I I'm wondering if the small free law um, do reflect the actual smoke free. Um, ban or smoking ban uh, in public mm. places. Um, and what about this voluntary smoking ban? Um, is it common in China um, that um, stores, public places, uh, the store owners, restaurant owners may adopt the um, voluntary smoke-free um, rule before the policy take, uh, take place? So. Okay. This is the first question I have. Okay, so um, you ask about what there is like voluntary smoke free rule in Beijing with uh, this this uh, primary target of this presentation and uh, this study. So actually, there is a partial smoke free ban in Beijing before this uh, treatment uh, before twenty fifteen, uh, actually before twenty ten. Um, so so that one actually. I'm going to discuss it in the discussion session that uh, it, it, it could be uh, one of the reasons that we did not achieve really like a significant decrease in the smoking results in the uh, smoking outcomes and some cigarette consumption in our primary analysis. Um, so, 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 but the but biggest difference uh, between that one, the partial smoking ban, and then the one actually I study here is that that one there's um, they allow there to be smoking rooms and then buffer periods. And then, and then there's no clear law enforcement agencies to make these say, um, and like the restaurants and then shopping malls to comply with that policy. So if there's no, as you just mentioned, you're wondering like the implementation of this such policy, it is really important for us uh, in for this study that actually we'll look at the policy that there is a clear law enforcement and there is clear penalty for non-compliance like being assigned to you know the, the the shopping mall and the restaurant for like making that to be the motivation for them to you know enforce this policy onto their customers so what happened before then is that there is there is this thing going on um especially during the uh, olympics period uh, 2008 um but after that there's this no uh, you know, say uh, the, the strong policy like the inf law enforcement onto the uh, compliance of that partial smoke free ban, resulting in a still like a pretty high uh, smoking rate. As you can see, like actually, if we don't have the data for like prior to the 2010, and it will be interesting to see if there is like a, a you know, jump of the smoking cigarette consumption smoking rate after the, uh, the um, 2008 Olympics. Yes, no, yes. Yeah, great, um, thank you. So I wonder if the data um, contains the information um, such like um, self-reported uh, secondhand smoke exposure, self-reported uh, smoking ban, and um, while well, looking at the, using that data, could you, you know, like 
I wonder if the survey have that information. If it does, then you could use that information to match with the actual, um, well, the law um, and see if the, um, well, there's uh, like a, the consistency yeah, yeah. Uh, between the self-reported, um, yeah, answer versus the, 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 with the law uh, enforcement, with the, the law, the policies. Yes, um, it will be really interesting to see if there is a report of secondhand smoking in this data set. Um, I didn't find, uh, I think they are on a, like a separate sheet of the data. And then it's that that question wasn't being at, like asked every round of this panel survey. So it's not like consistent as the one we have here. Like the, have you smoked in the past month? And if you do, like how much do you smoke every day? And then for the smoking ban, if like like they live in a place they have the, like this comprehensive smoking ban, um, unfortunately we do not have that information. Otherwise, I it would be really nice to have because, like I uh, like I've just said, we only have the identifiable you know name of the province that this participant resides in, not the actual prefectures level level city, or is it district? So that's why I excluded every participant resides in the in the province that has at least more than one city that enacted this treatment of interest in our study because I don't know if that one the participant actually been treated because I don't know which like the the specific location that participant resides in I only know which province he or she resides in so that's the limitation of this data set we have yes. Yeah, since you are talking about the data set, um, so it is a panel data, right? Yes. Um, so could you well could you speak a little bit more about how you treated this uh, panel uh, design? I'm are you only including the individuals who are consistently so, um, well p participating into the survey, um, or you just treat them uh, treat the surveys, um, as a repeated cross-sectional surveys. Um, could you speak a little bit more about how you um, yes. treat the, yeah, how, thanks. Yes, um, actually we do have, this is a panel study, so we do have uh, participants who have been constant, consistently enrolled. We do have like a individual level identifier in the data set we have. Um, the thing is, um, this data set experienced a huge, uh, say, attrition um, throughout years, and then there have been like new people being like reassigned to the data set. So if we use, it will be really ideal, like it really good to to have like this, you know, um, every person like this person being observed from 2010 to 2020. And then we do this um, estimation. But the thing is, if we do that, we will be leaving like a so few like participants that stayed in this study. And then that will be a, be of a like a huge problem to uh, the precision of the estimation. And then even if we, uh, so that's why we used a, basically we treat it as a constant, like repetitive cross-sectional uh, survey. And even even with that, we trying to like, uh, you know, have as much, uh, you know, participants as, much, much as possible. We still faced a big um, precision problem as you will see in the results that we have a, like a pretty wide confidence interval, yes. Great, thank you. Um, and what about the outcome? Because um, when I was reading your article, uh, the paper, uh, I wasn't sure. Um, is the outcome? Did you? Is the outcome um, the individual outcome, or the out? You aggregated the individual response to the county level, because you talk about the smoking rate per county, uh, cigarettes per day per county. So, um, yeah. So the question is. Could you please clarify the outcome major? Is it the okay. individual outcome, or the out the the unit of the 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 study is the the county? You aggregated the information up to the county or yes, province we, uh, level. We aggregated the unit to the county because essentially we the the like the treated unit that we have in the synthetic differences and difference estimator is that we use the county as the treated unit, and then use other counties and districts uh as the donor units mm -hmm. so we have the outcome value assigned to this donor and then this treated unit um so based like 
after aggregating the individual's uh, reported value onto this um, county level. Yes. Yeah. So if the outcome is an aggregate outcome, um, then would that be a concern about um, regarding to the um, gender disparity in smoking rates? Um, since the male smoking rate is very high, but in China, women women don't usually smoke. So um, if uh, the county, you know, if in your data, um, you know, males male are uh, happen or well, they are more male um, happen to be um, in the survey um, in a county, then this high, like, like more male may, this scenario may boost up the smoking rate um, in the county level. Right? Yeah, so, 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 yes. So actually um, it is it's a very, like, very good point because actually we try to see, like uh, do a subset, uh, subgroup analysis, separating on, uh, you know, conditioning on the, uh, uh, gender data like for, uh, like males and then females like we did the same procedure on the two different set of data conditioning on on gender and then and then and then also talking about like and then what we found is that if we conditioning on the gender on males right we found a significant uh, results in in our primary analysis and I chose not to report that uh, because I feel like this the, the multiple testing is a uh, is a big issue. And then and then like like there's so many subgroup analysis. And then if I if I were re, like running like more subgroup analysis, I will end up getting significant results anyways, because of the like 90, 95 confidence interval. And then talking circle back to the concern that you have is that the county survey might have more male than females. And Thanks to the design of the the the, the survey they have, um, they basically ran like they randomized the sampling on district level via like geographical location where they live. So if I look like the baseline um, characteristics of the recruited at least for the Beijing counties for the recruited uh, participants, the gender, uh, you know, the, the the distribution of gender is quite even. So so it's. It's okay, so it's good. Yes. Wait. Well, thanks. That's all the questions I have for now. Thank you. Okay, Chen, if you could um, show us the results and, and the discussion in in about twelve or thirteen minutes, and then we'll save some time at the end for more discussion. Okay, great. Okay, so I consume uh, resume my presentation. So, okay, this is a scatty plot of the four uh, analysis I've done with the primary analysis is, is the ID estimator. So if we only look at the, we first look at the short-term estimation here in this column. And you can see like this red line represents the outcome trend. This dashed, like the, the faded red line represents the outcome trend of Beijing, smoking rate uh, of Beijing. And this blue line represents the synthetic control we have. And actually we observed a increase in smoking rates oddly uh of this policy uh after this policy implementation however um this you know this uh, estimation could be due to random because you will later see that the conference i will have a plot to show that the conference you know, was so wide so this um this results might not be say uh, it might be due to random and then this also this is one for uh, the cigarette consumption we can see again this blue line represents the outcome trend, actually observed outcome trend. Oh, this red line actually represents the observed outcome trend of Beijing, and then this blue line represents the observed outcome trend in other uh, counties. We can see that there is uh, a higher cigarette consumption, uh, generally for the, the synthetic control, and then a for for other counties, and then. Um, so you can see this dot here. Okay, so you see this blue dot here will represent the res uh, the the uh, the smoking uh, cigarette consumption that would have would have happened if the Beijing County District was not being treated with this policy. So this is the intuition behind this estimation. 
you see this excessive amount of drop in the cigarette consumption can be viewed as the causal effect of this policy on the outcome. So the same works for the other graphs. If we look at the long-term results for the smoking rate, you can see there is a quite large numerical uh, numeric de decrease in smoking rate in the long term. And then for cigarette consumption, it's quite consistent that we have a lowered uh, cigarette consumption in the treated group. But the, actually the change is a bit smaller numerically in the long term. I will get, get to this interesting results in the, uh, in the later slides. So, so this graph is quite um, very obvious that we have a really long confidence interval like that we I like to discuss earlier because of the uh, lack of power in the study. And then this is the numerical results we have here. So you can see actually in the long term, the smoking rate, you know, see the, the, the change in smoking rate. We can see if come like if from like almost no policy like the if effect to a pretty, I would say big numerical decrease uh in the smoking rate. It's like you can see the, the absolute value is like 3.4% of the population quit smoke, uh, excessive amount of population quit smoking. So it will be a considerable amount of people if the point estimate is like valid. And then, however, it is not significant because it crosses this zero value here. And for the cigarette consumption, it's um, pretty much no result all the way. And so this is a leave one out analysis and I'll take uh, the esti estimation of SDID estimator on the short-term smoking rate example. So for this graph, what it means that for say this red line is the one actually we use in the primary analysis. And then this all these blue lines represent each iteration in which we removed one most like one donor being assigned the highest weight um, and then rerun the model we have with the same equation um, and then get the results again. So you can see after the iteration process uh, many, many times with e every donor included, we see the estimations quite consistent all the way um, across the iteration. So we'll say the, um, the estimation is quite stable based on this graph. And, and then for other uh, scenarios, it looks like this as well. So, and for the fixed effect regression, this is quite interesting because um, we've actually found a significant correlation between provisional level smoking rate and cigarette consumption and the percentage of population being covered by this low free policy in each province. So again, uh, no causal conclusion being drawn from this outcome of this you know, result. But however, if if the call there is causal uh relationship, because we find a correlation, and then based on the previous uh primary analysis where we do can we can like intel causal interpretation and actually the results align with the primary analysis. And what we can do is if we assume there is causal relationship between the coverage and the uh, outcome of interest. The intuition behind it, it will be, what will, like the, the CFSC coverage, if moved from zero to 100% to a prob in a province, the change will be associated with a reduced smoking rate of 5.8% and a reduction of 2.16 cigarettes per smoker smoke per day. So we can see this change of smoking rate is big in this um, estimation. So back to this, actually this result results can back um, our primary analysis up in terms of the long-term smoking rate reduction. And I'll get to this result uh, in the later slides to explain why this happened. So with a bit of discussion. So first, Combining SDID model and regression results, we noticed that there are limited policy effects in Beijing compared to late adopters because 
See, the regression and the fixed effect regression actually combines the potential policy effect of the later adopters, not only Beijing, but also later adopters. And these adopters may not have been like ever adopted a partial smoke free ban. But in Beijing, that I just mentioned in the discussion before, it en enacted a partial smooth free band prior to the data set range. So it could be the case that that prior partial smooth free band already achieved some results. And then we later we enacted this, this CSFP, making it the, making this, you know, the impact of this policy looks lower than it should have been if that Beijing has never be never be treated with this policy or similar policies. And then CSFP, the second point is that may lack the capacity to affect stubborn smokers, uh, given the decrease in smoking rate, but not the smoking amount in amount of smokers in the long term. Because remember, when we have um, the results from primary analysis, we see that the smoking rate did not change much one year after policy adoption, but changed a lot in terms of point estimation in five years after policy implementation. And with that, and but however, this, the smoking consumption remained quite, like the reduction remained quite small throughout the way. What that means could be these, policy, these people, like smokers who are very likely to be affected by this, um, po this policy, just quit smoking after the policy adoption, like a couple of years after the policy adoption. And actually, and then actually the ones who have not really affected this policy, just like who, who, who didn't quit at the end of the study, they remain to consume the same amount of smoke like cigarettes per, uh, per day. So that explains why there's a drop in the smoke cigarette consumption in the short term, but there's like not much in the long term. But we have a, low like big smoking rate decrease in the long-term estimation. So there's a couple of strengths of the limitation of this study. So the strength, one of the strengths of this study is that we used a CID design and then trying to, and based on the fully available data, we're trying to construct a valid counterfactual for the policy impact evaluation. And second is that studying policy of smoking related topic in China is very difficult given the the political scenario, uh, atmosphere, and then also the limitation of this data we have. So this, nevertheless, this research leverages best smoking-related open access data to implement a quasi-experiment design for causal inference. So we do have some limitations I have to uh, acknowledge is that like the county level data collected were not self-representative by the safe survey design, but they were sampled at random. Um, so this, but this still my hampering the internal validity of this research. And this study only has six time points um, and only three pre-intervention. So the estimate of the SDID could be less precise and then it is actually evidence in the wide confidence of what we have. So finally, while using the county level uh, CSFP free donor is appropriate given the basic requirements of this uh, method methodology. Uh, this Results of this comparison may, may be less valid because of the high imbalance development across China. Because one of the key assumptions need to be made in this DID estimator design analysis is that the donors should be you know, fairly comparable to the treated unit in other aspects. But in this study, like the donors are across China, and then we know all, we, a lot of people know that Beijing is the capital with the you know most advanced um development in like in, in many ways. And then so the donors might come from, you know, the village from rural area area. So they could be not that comparable. This hampering the, uh, the result, results as well. So the conclusion, um, despite there's no statistically significant results, we found some suggestive evidence that the policy impact um, may, have, may have impact on the long-term smoking rate. And the validity of this estimation is backed by the a primary analysis, the big numerical decrease in the long-term smoking rate, and also the consistent result in the sensitivity analysis. So what is the implication of this study? 
So the implication is that a potential level CSP is recommended for improving public, uh, population health in China. And future studies with more detailed and higher quality data to confirm this study uh, result and also investigating have an investigation into the implementation status of this policy are warranted. And I'll stop at this slide and thank you for your attention. And we'll go to the discussion now. Thanks so much, Ichan. That was really great. Um, really, really important paper. Um, we, ha we have some great discussion in the Q&A, so I'd like to ask some questions um, fr from that. Um, specifically, uh, Xiao Wei, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, uh, has some great comments. Um, uh, I I'll just read a couple. Um, uh, so, you know, anytime you have a, a policy analysis like this, you worry about kind of concurrent policies that are going on as well. And, and uh, Xiao Wei raises the point that China raised the tobacco tax in 2015, which seems like that's happening at about the same time as your, your policy. So, so uh, can you speak to that? Yes, um, we actually, we are aware of the tobacco policy of uh, tax change in 2015 as well. But we, we, what we do and done is for, with the synthetic difference in differences design, we created this um, thing had a control based on the donors from other places in China who has who are also being treated with this tax along with Beijing. So what that means is that we we controlled for the tax impact by using the donors who are actually they are, who are also being affected by this tax change. So so the two parallel trends we have between the synthetic control, Beijing, and then actually the observed Beijing is a trend that actually we have taken into account the extraneous, like the policy, say the tech tax change in 2015 by using by by using the donors who has also been treated with this policy and put this taxi policy and then we used the outcome trend of these uh yeah. Okay. That's, after the future. Yes. That, that sounds good. Okay. So, um, uh, Xiaowei also asks, um, have you considered using the Beijing Adult Smoking Survey? Um, so it was conducted five times already, and the the Beijing CDC just released the twenty twenty three survey results. So have you have you considered those data? Yes. Um, we are aware of that um survey. And then what we done so so we are now really looking at the you know say the um the the, the results after the twenty twenty because of the COVID there's a very big impact on the smoking rate and also cigarette consumption there's it's not um it's not good for our my estimation but for the data beforehand so it is a survey only for Beijing right is survey being done in Beijing to see the you know the smoking rate in Beijing. But what we're trying to do is we need to find controls for the our study. And then it is best way to we find the controls that be exampled and you know and also uh, say a data being collected in the same procedure to the one that we actually interested in, which is Beijing County uh, district in this example. So if that I don't know if that is just a question. Okay, well, it sounds like you've thought about it. Um, so Michael Marshall asks a question about gray and or black markets for goods that are, are regulated. Um, can you speak to that in this context? Uh, the gray or black mac markets of, uh, of cigarettes, I think? Cigarette yeah. Sales. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. So it would be an issue if we use um, the cigarette sales data, uh, if we have the cigarette sales data of uh, China in general. But we do not have it. So the outcome here is actually not that being concerned about that portion of uh, the gray or black market of cigarette sales because we are really looking at like the individuals, um, you know, cigarette consumption and then cigarette uh, and then if they smoke. And then this is not that concerned with um, the black market because if as long as the survey participant answered the questionnaire honestly, we will have the accurate estimation. Uh, about the study outcome, outcomes of interest in this study. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, yeah. So, um, can you just speak a little bit about the the um, the difference between kind of smoking at home versus public places? 
So, uh, you, you know, there's, a, there's evidence in, the, in other countries and other contexts that uh, smoke-free laws in, say, apartment buildings or public apartment buildings have big effects. But, but here, it's, it, it's, it's confined to more public places. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so, so this is the national policy implemented to ban all, like, no, not national, but like city level policy implemented to ban all kinds of smoking behavior in public indoor places uh, in public transport. So it doesn't really restrain any smoking behavior in private apartments and hall houses. But is this applied to like, say, if you're looking, living in a commercial apartment and then you cannot smoke in the hallway, something like that. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, one one technical question from Reginald. Can you talk a little bit about how you actually what like what statistical software you used for this, and what number of uh, repetitions you denoted for a, for the placebo? Uh, so we used the R package from 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 the R software, mm -hmm. and then we used uh one hundred placebo tests, uh, to run uh for the confidence interval cal uh, calculation. So because we have so many donors. So each iteration takes a long time. So 100 is uh, is is fairly enough number in this case. Okay, um, and and Fatma has a has a has a uh, clarification question about the outcome. So, uh, you, um, have you considered using per capita uh, smoking rather than some total measure of smoking? Yes. So for per capita smoking data, we will have to have a um, representative data on a region, say the district, say 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 the per capita smoking amount in uh, in Beijing. But however, we do not have access to that kind of data. We only have the survey data available. So, so it is a good point that we 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 have to mention that this um, effect estimate. Can only be applied can only be applied to the ones who actually got treated, which is the Beijing district in this case. Which I do not know which one it is, but it is the Beijing district in this case. So yeah, this is like a distinct distinguishment I want to make that this study really is uh, since we make this inside control based on the Beijing district only. So the effect estimates is only really like the average treatment results on the treated instead of the average treatment. Uh, average, average treatment effect on like itself. So that's the distinguishment uh, I want to make. Yes. Okay. Um, so we have just two minutes left. So I, I just wanted to thank you for uh, a great presentation. Thank you to uh, Kai Wen uh, Cheng for a great discussion. Uh, and we're going to go out with Sam Strom. Okay, so now that we're out of time, if you still have burning questions or thoughts for I Ching Feng, you can join us for Top of the Tops, an interactive group discussion offered immediately following Select Tops events this season. To join, please copy the Zoom meeting URL posted in the chat and, uh, and switch rooms with us once this event concludes. We'll leave this webinar room open for an extra minute to give everyone a chance to copy the URL, which is bit.ly slash tops meeting. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash tops meeting, all lowercase. Thank you to our presenter, moderator, and discussant. Finally, thank you to our audience of 170 people for your participation. Have a tops notch weekend. <laughs>